think I'm going to try to make some jelly today. I had those grapes in the freezer since last year. So I'm going to go get them and try to do something with them. Alrighty, I got a few jars sanitized and I got my grapes all sitting in the sink. And they're all different. Like I have a full grapes that I've not done anything with. There's the meat of some grapes. And there's the skins of some grapes. And those are the first things that I want to put in the pan to get going. And, uh, you know, I just have different stages of grapes. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get these in the pan. And that way I can get them hot and get them ready for the blender. Okay, I'm going to get some of the, the grapes that are in with the skins and the meat just so I can see what I have. Mm, it smells really good. Mm. Mm, they're so sweet already. Okay, so it looks like I have, they're de-stemmed. And uh, so they just have the the meat and the skin and the seed. So I'll have to, I'm gonna do them separately to get the seeds out easier that way. I have one more like that. I'll let them kind of try to unthaw a little bit. I only have one big cooking pan, so I'm gonna do what I can. All right, so that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and um, sanitize some more jars. And we'll see how this is doing. Hard as a rock. That freezer we have just really is good. But look at that juice down there. Mmm, so pretty. And good, man. It's just already sweet. All right. Let that unthaw. And <laughs> I'll try to keep you informed of what I'm doing. I am multitasking today, so if I miss a step or two because the camera's busy, then I will we'll just have to talk it in later. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and take the frozen grapes off the stems. Figured it would be easier while they're frozen and uh, might make the, the job a little faster. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put gloves on. I did one and a fourth bags and I'm gonna put the rest of them back in the freezer. They, they'll make good grape dumplings if nothing else. But mm, these are gonna turn out so good. So I got a big bowl and a half and my fingers are frozen. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna call that good on destemming the grapes, but I would recommend that way of destemming the grapes. Uh, just uh, <laughs> let them freeze and mm, that way you can destem them. All right, guys. Alright, let's see how that pot's 
not look good. All right, so I got them all unthawed and kind of cooked a little bit. I'm going to continue to cook them for a little bit, but then I'm going to take them out, let them cool, and run them through the blender. Mm. All right, I'm going to take them out and let them be cooling off. Just the juice out of the <laughs> out of the skins. That is awesome. Alrighty, so I'm gonna put the meat in now. The meat of the grape. And get it unthawed. I'm gonna have lots of juice out of this. And uh, I think I'm gonna strain it for grape dumplings. Okay. I didn't want to flop that down. <laughs> let, the, let it flop all that hot juice out. Okay, so back to the frozen grapes. The whole frozen grapes that I destemmed. I'm gonna check out something that I thought maybe might work to get the seeds out easier. I don't know if it will, never seen anybody do it. But I'm gonna take these, because they're still frozen, and smash them down. And see if it will release the seed easier. You got about, I don't know, anywhere from three to five seeds per grape. It works, but I don't think it's going to be easier than what I'm going to be doing later with the, with the warm grape. That way I'm not working with a frozen grape. I was hoping they would kind of just uh, pop out of there a little better, but they didn't. So we'll mix that idea and... Uh, worry about the seeds when I get to that part when I'm cooking them. It's funny that the white meat of it is white. Okay, I'm going to get ready to put these in the ninja.
gym. Mm. Okay, so I just have to be patient if I'm going to strain it all. I don't have to, though, you guys. Look at that. I guess if I see a big skin, I can always just take it out. But, wow, that is wonderful. I've never done grape jelly or grape jam for that matter. I'm excited about it. I just didn't have time earlier when I got them. Or I just didn't want to make the time would be more accurate. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this, you guys, until I get the blender empty. Okay, I wanted to show you how creamy that looks. It's thick, but it's creamy. And that is just the grape skins that I blended and then strained through this strainer. Now what I'm going to get ready to do, this is the meat. I'm going to put it in the strainer and strain it through to get the seeds out the best that I can. See how that works. Sorry, I got you so close. But see how that meat just, uh, just kind of melts right down and that's leaving all the seeds so that I can strain those seeds out of there. Okay, I'll get busy doing that. All right guys, I thought I would take you through uh, one process of a spoonful of meat just to show you what I'm what I'm doing um, and how long it takes to do that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to take my strainer, I'm going to put it on top of this pan and get a spoonful out of the other pot. And basically that is just to get it transported over, take a little bit of juice out of it. And then it transfers over just real perfect right there. Okay, so the next thing I do is I sit down because my knees are deciding that they don't want to do this today. All right, I'll take my spatula. And this is the meat of the grape. And I thought maybe I was gonna have to run it in the blender, but I don't because it is just softened enough uh, with that little bit of cooking that I did to get it unthawed. And I thought that when I did these meat, that um, I took out the seeds. So maybe I started to take out seeds and then I got tired. I'm not sure what happened, but since it's got seeds in it, I'm going to go ahead and drain it. Drain it. I'm going to go ahead and strain it. <laughs> um, one more thing I was going to tell you. I forgot. I'll think about it a little bit and let you know. Oh, I know. So, um, dang, I just lost it again.
thought of it twice and then now I can't even remember what I was going to say. Oh, I know. Quickly, quickly. I haven't even read the instructions on grape jam yet. <laughs> but uh, common sense tells me that you don't want seeds in it. And uh, you don't want whole skins in it. So, after I get this stuff, this uh, what I would call the meat of the jam, then I'll pick up my recipe and look at it. But like I said, common sense tells you. You don't want a grape jam with those big old seeds in it. And you sure don't want all them big old skins in it. Got spoonfuls already, you know. About half gone, probably. I can lift it up and get the stuff off of the strainer. Maybe wondering how I'm going to get all those seeds out of there. I found works for me. Pick up some seeds and some meat. And just tap it. You can see that cleans that off pretty good. That way you just get rid of the seeds and not the meat. And I'm sure there's easier ways to do these things, but as I always say. This is not an instructional video. This is just a how I do it video. And since I've never done jam before, not done jelly, but I've never done jam before. And I've never done grape before. It was the apple for my apple skins at one time. So one thing I have learned from this is taking the seeds out first would probably be the way to go if you have to freeze them. And then that way they would just be ready to do whatever you want to do with them. So I'm throwing these in this in this little jar. Because there again, there's a lot of juice there. And uh I can cook that down and strain it and get it off of the seeds. And then I'll have, you know, a grape juice to cook with. It also can be a uh, syrup for pancakes and waffles.
Okay, that's how long it's taken me to do one spoonful. Up and raise the bottom. Get all that goodness out there. so good. <laughs> Thank you for going through that process with me and maybe not fast forwarding. So I'm just going to keep on doing this until this pan is done. And I still have in the sink the one that has no stems, but it's the whole grape. All right, I got the last of the meat in my strainer. I'm going to be straining that out and getting the seeds out of it. I'm going to take the frozen grapes that were already destemmed. I'm going to put them in the pot to be getting unthawed. It's heavy. Wash your hands, people. Wash your hands. Right. Okay, I'm gonna set the fire on that just on low, put a lid on it. All right, I'm back in the kitchen. I took a little break and I forgot I left this on the fire. So it was really bubbling when I came in. And I sure didn't want it to be doing that because I wanted it to be cooling down so I could see if I could get my fingers in there and uh, start taking off them skins. Um, I'm going to let that cool down a little bit and go work on the ones that are in the front room. These are the ones that were destemmed and taken. These are the ones that had stems on them. And I just stuck the whole things in some... I can't think. <laughs> I've had too much grape stuff going on today okay yeah these are the ones that have the stems on and all I did was put them in those gallon bags and stick them in the freezer so I'm finding out that it is going to be easier to at least get the skins off and do them separately because that mess I got going on in the kitchen now it looks like it's going to be really hard and plus, I left the fire on and got them too hot, so I couldn't even mess with them with my fingers. So, no way you can pull out anything up to the stem. But take the time to at least take the skins off, is what I've determined is the best. clarify that I would not take the skins off while I was going to be putting them in the freezer but I would definitely take the skins off before we um, do any cooking or processing in any way with heat I'm gonna wipe my hands off and turn the camera off okay so same way as I did the meat. I took a couple spoonfuls, put it in over a strainer in that pan to kind of siphon out a lot of the juice. This is with the meat and the skins together. I definitely don't like it this way, so I'll have to remember that when I get grapes to freeze, I go ahead and take the skins off first. Then you can freeze the meat and the seeds. Okay, the meat that was sitting on the table has produced quite a bit of juice. I'm going to go ahead and get that and slow cook that for a little bit so that they will be easy to mash up. Okay, I let that 
meats boil like for one minute. So now I'm going to take it to my secondary here. Get the juice out of it. that so I can mash it. And then the skins that I had, you know, just skins alone. Look at all that great juice in there, you guys. So I'm going to cook those a little bit so that they'll be easier to put into the blender and grind up. Okay, the last bit of skin is going in the... Hey everybody, so I'm getting ready to start on the jelly, but my goodness, this thing calls for six cups of sugar. Are you kidding? With as sweet as the grapes are anyway, I just can't imagine using six cups, but I'm going to measure them out anyway and probably only use about half. <laughs> we'll see as it gets along. Okay. All right, let's make some jam. Grape delicious jam. There's the meat. Woo, that looks so pretty. Let me show it to you. That look pretty. And then I have a, a little jar of grape juice in case I need the meat to be um, runnier. I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Let's look at the instructions. Okay, so the instructions are very simple. Old-fashioned grape jam. No pectin added. Old-fashioned grape jam is packed with flavor. <laughs> the grape skins add lovely color and give the finished jam a fabulous texture. So that's what we're after. Eight cups of grapes and six cups of sugar. Seed grapes, squeezing the grape flesh out of the skin and then cooking the pulp down. Put the pulp through a fine mesh strainer and then combine the filtered pulp with the grape skins. Add the skins and pulp into a saucepan along with the sugar and cook the mixture until it reaches gel stage. About 10-15 minutes. Pour the jam into prepared canning jars leaving a fourth inch headspace. Store in the refrigerator for immediate use or Process in a water bath canner for 10 minutes. Turn off the heat and allow the jars to sit in the canner for an additional 5 minutes before removing them to cool on a towel on the counter. Allow the jars to rest 24 to 48 hours to completely gel. This recipe is supposed to yield 6 8 ounce jars of grape jam. All right, let's get started. All right, so I guess the first thing I need to do is, well, let's use the front burner if I can. Might have to start it. That one doesn't like to start by itself. All right. Bring my pot over. Let me get a scraper so I can scrape all that out of there. Okay, I'm going to stop at five cups. We 
because when the recipe says eight, well, you've got the whole grapes and everything. You don't just have the meat. Okay, so I'm going to stop at five there. Okay. Keep my sponge handy so I can wipe up the drips. Okay, so as far as the sugar, let me get a half cup measuring. It's supposed to be six cups. Just can't imagine six cups. Okay, so there's half. There's one. Half. Two. Half. Three. So now I just stir it in there. Okay, I'm going to get this all stirred up and I'll be right back. Okay, so until that comes up to boil, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, all the stuff I need. And I need, a, I need a ladle. I need some vinegar to wipe the jars off with. I need to make sure I have enough lids and rings. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to need. Okay, what we're looking for here is a rolling boil. They do say that sugar is an important part of helping it to gel up. But I figured if it doesn't gel up, this is going to make a perfect syrup for pancakes and stuff like that. I am just not going to add any more sugar. I've got my funnel and I've got my hot jar holder thing. I've got my lids, jars, more sugar if I want it, bowl of vinegar, ladle. And I did go ahead and get the water preheated for the water bath. Okay, now we all, all we gotta do is watch for that to go to a rolling boil. Okay, we're starting to boil. Not quite a rolling boil yet, but definitely boiling. A rolling boil, you can, you're not supposed to be able to stir it out. And we stirred that out, so. My silicone spatula is good up to 450 degrees. So happy about that. I'm looking for it to be a little thickened. Okay, I'm going to move things around a little bit. It is getting a little thicker. Yay! Boy, it's hard just to sit and wait. <laughs> mm. But it is thickening up. So... I'm happy to see that. It is coming to a rolly boil, isn't it? thickening up. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Get ready and fill the jars.
Okay, I'm gonna give them all just a little bitty twist. And yes, they are hot. Whew. All right, going into the water bath now. And it is, it's up and over. Okay, now I gotta let it bring back to boil though. Okay. And then I'll boil for 10 minutes. So Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and start my second batch. Three cups here. I'm only putting in a half a cup of sugar. That's it. Alright, so I told you I was making that second batch. And my water has not come back to a boil yet here. So I have room for three um, of the jams in there. So whenever that starts to boil, <laughs> then I'm going to take the jam out and put it in the jars and put it in the jars. And as always, this is not an instructional video. This is just how I do a video. <laughs> Okie dokie. That's boiling real good. And... That has just started to boil, so I'm gonna get that in the jars. It didn't seem to take as much time either. That's, well, because it was less too. So learn as I go, learn as I go, learn as I go. This basically was just to boil, and uh, it boiled about five minutes probably. And these have gold lids, so it's a good way to be able to tell them apart of which one I put less sugar in. Alrighty, great dumplings. So I saved some of my jam mixture so that I could make some grape dumplings. Now this hasn't had any sugar added or anything because this was just the pulp in the skins. I would say it probably gave me hmm, about a cup. About a cup. And I'm not going to be putting any sugar in it because these grapes don't need sugar. Okay, so I'm going to get the fire on under this and get it to boiling. And, uh, I may or may not put a little bit of grape juice in there. We'll see. All right, to make the dumplings. Okay, so I'm gonna get a cup of flour. That's a half a cup. Okay, two teaspoons of baking powder. All right, just enough milk to moisten it. I'm gonna pour some in this little cup. So this is a half, so just use half of that. And these are going to be drop dumplings. These are not going to be laid down and pressed and cut out. Okay, and that's just whole milk. peek at the jam. Okay, it's bubbling real good. I'm going to put it on low. Okay, so this ended up with two cups of milk. Okay. I like the texture of that, so I'm going to get on over to the stove. Okay, my jam was ready to take out, so I went ahead and did that. Okay. It's bubbling pretty good. So this is just a dinner teaspoon, so... 
this dip on spoonfuls, just dump it in. A lot of people do um, make the dough where they can roll it out and cut it. But I like to eat dumplings this way. Now, I've never made grape dumplings before, you guys, so just like I've never made grape jam. <laughs> but you don't know if you can do it until you try it. And I just thought that the thickness of this jam just by itself without having to add anything, sugar or flour or starch, I just thought it would turn out really good. sure that it's getting all over those dumplings. Okay, now it's just a matter of letting them cook for a little bit. So, no, probably five minutes or less will do. So let's look that cook for five minutes and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to flip them again. Oh, look at that. Nice and done. So if I wanted to make any more, I think what I would, I think I would add some grape juice because I got plenty of it from yesterday. So that's the only difference I would do. So I'm going to go ahead and let it finish cooking. Put a lid on it. Let some of that heat stay in there. Okay, and that was five minutes. I did stir them one more time. Ooh, I love it. Wow. Doesn't that look awesome? I love how that sticks to it. Now remember, this is without sugar or anything. Cornstarch, nothing like that. Which I think that would work just fine. But since I have some grape juice left from last night and I have a few more dumplings that I could make, I'm going to pour that juice in here and we're going to make some more. I'm going to sit down here and eat some of these. Too hot. <laughs> Those are good. Mm. Thick, very thick gel on there. But that dumpling is done all the way through. It's, it's just a, a hint of tartness because we didn't add any sugar, but just a hint. Mm. You know, I bet these would keep. Mix them up and freeze them. I might freeze one just to see. Just one. <laughs> mm. Oh, good. I wanted to make sure you got to look at the inside of that dumpling. Well, wow. 
I'm going to make a little bit smaller dumplings. They're still drop dumplings. Gonna make sure that they're all covered and then I'm just gonna leave it be for five minutes with the lid. And it did thicken up. Grape dumplings made with homemade grape juice. Wow, that looks fantastic. I think I like the smaller dumplings better than the larger dumplings. Thanks for joining me on Simple Sunday, even though it wasn't simple. <laughs> Great dumplings. Well, everybody, this is the next day, and I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how the jam turned out. Okay, so I had uh, good seals on all of them, so I'm real happy about that. Um, on this one, it kind of gelled, kind of funny. Okay, so you see it. Oops, that's the wrong one. That one gelled good. <laughs> you could tell. This one, it has liquid on the top, but then it looks like the rest of it gelled. Isn't that kind of funny? <laughs> and the backs there that have the gold lids, those are the ones that I didn't put very much sugar in at all. And they are just very thick. kind of um, kind of jam they these are the ones I think that I'm going to be using when I make grape dumplings so I'll use like a jar of this and then a jar of just grape juice when I make the grape dumplings from now on so but this one was kind of weird I thought so I had basically five five that sealed and gelled real good and then the little baby he gelled real good so that's how my jellies turned out so you guys if you want to give it a try it's a lot of work doing it the way i did it but it was very fun and so rewarding you guys i'm i couldn't be any any pleasered pleasered <laughs> It's early in the morning, you guys. <laughs> Have a good day.